Welcome to T4G. How y'all doing today? Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Hopefully you guys are going to be your best selves today. Today we're going to talk about Ohio State being driven by Michigan to a championship run. I think this is great. This rivalry is fantastic. This rivalry is the best rivalry in college football. I think Ohio State is the most feared team in college football right now. I think Kirby Smart has Ohio State circled on his board, and he's most afraid of Ohio State, just like Alabama was. Alabama was scared of Georgia and Ohio State because a lot of those guys, Caleb Downs, who just went to Ohio State, his number two choice was Ohio State. His number one choice was Alabama, and he proved that. And so I'm telling you, Ohio State's, they're changing things. And we'll explain all of the things that they're changing in this video. And you guys will see after this video why Ohio State is going to be one of the scariest teams moving forward. They had one foot in their football program, one foot out. People were like, what do you mean Ohio State had one foot in, one foot out? I'll explain to you further in this video, but now they have both feet in. They're fully invested in this program. In the last three years, Michigan won the Big Ten. Last year, this last year, Michigan won the Natty. The entire time in these last three years that they've been successful, they have been caught cheating. Okay? And they haven't even yet been punished for the recruiting violations. That was a self-imposed uh, punishment by the university. Okay, then the Big Ten did a self-imposed punishment on Jim Harbaugh later in that season for finding out about the cheating scandal. And I know people will say, well, everyone does this. Everyone does this. Uh, no, they don't. And, and you should be able to prove that. Tell me where there's another coach or a staffer playing incognito on a sidelines where he shouldn't be on with spy glasses. Show me that. Okay. Then the guy talked to basically every coach. He was around like every coach on the sidelines giving them giving them call signs and stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't look good. And then they fire Connor Stallions. Doesn't look good. Then they fight it and they say, we're innocent. We're taking you to court. Then they pull it. And, it, and it was, the judge was even a Michigan alumni. Come on, guys. It don't look good. This is not good. And on top of it, you have an FBI investigation going on. Um, this is not going to end well for Michigan. And if you think it is or you think, well, there's no, there's been no punishment yet, so that shows that they're innocent. Now, that's ridiculous because the NCAA moves like an iceberg. You think an iceberg is going to melt overnight? Hell no. They haven't even yet punished for the, for the recruiting violations. Trust me, it's coming and it's not going to be pretty. USC got hosed. Ohio State lost a legendary coach over, a tat, over tattoos. They lost Jim Tressel, who won a national championship, by the way. By the way, they also went 12-0 and got 12, 12 games taken away over tattoos. I, I'm telling you, it's not going to pan out well for Michigan. It's just not going to happen. So Ohio State's transfer portal and recruiting is on, is on the rise. Their stock is on the rise. They're getting better at NIL. Now, there's this misconception that Ohio State's NIL is so good that they're just dumping truckloads of cash. Uh, on these players, and that's how they're stealing them. They got Caleb Downs, who, by the way, this guy is so good, it's insane. Uh, he's the best defensive player in the entire country, not just even the SEC in the entire country, in my opinion. That's how good Caleb Downs is. And people think like, oh, well, the only way they could have stolen from Georgia is by giving him a truckload of cash. I don't think so. No, I, that's not how Ohio State operates and people forget Caleb Downs' second choice last year before he committed to Alabama was Ohio State. That was his second choice. That was the big, who's he going to go with, Ohio State or Alabama? Who, that's, that was the big talking point then. But then all of a sudden people forget and they're like, no, they bought him. They bought him. No, I hate to break it to you, but he was going to choose Ohio State over Georgia. That, that's, that's the way it was. Quinchon Judkins. Okay, leaves the SEC, best running back in the SEC, goes to Ohio State. Julian Sane, number one quarterback in the, the transfer or the uh, recruiting cycle 2024. They also have the number six in Air Nolan, and both those guys are coming onto this team. And I, I think Julian Sane's number two choice also was Ohio State. Okay, and you're going to see that clear up. Now that Nick Saban's gone, because Nick Saban was doing his best Hodor impression, where he's holding the door, and Hodor, Hodor, and, and that's what he's doing, and the, the door's trying to break down, and Ohio State and Georgia on the opposite side, Nick Saban's looking back and going, when I let go of this door, you guys are going to see how great of a coach I actually am. Because these guys, I'm the only one holding them back, and then he lets go of that door, and Ohio State breaks through first. They grab Caleb Downs, Julian Sand. They also get Quinshawn Judkin. I mean, these guys, they were not playing around at all. 
Okay, so Ohio State's stock is on the rise. So then you got guys who are just upset. I think Lane Kiffin's upset here. He, he he tweeted out, and this is January 21st, report, Ohio State Buckeyes spent $13 million in counting in NIM, in NIL money in an attempt to field an elite roster. Um, how much money did Ole Miss spend uh, in the transfer portal that they're ranked number one in right now to in an attempt to field an elite roster? Also, I, I think Ole Miss is attempting to field an elite roster more than Ohio State is. I don't think Ohio State's attempting. I think they are fielding an elite roster, and I think you can easily prove that by looking at the NFL draft and the players who are successful in the NFL. Um, Ohio State is right up there. Okay, so I, this this whole thing is ridiculous. Also, I, I do think that Lane Kiffin's a little salty at the Big Ten in the SEC or the Big Ten in Ohio State uh, because Ohio State is taking really good players away from Ole Miss in the last two years. They they took it was two years ago they took Davison Igbunosum, uh, who was a freshman uh, All American for the SEC uh, out of Ole Miss, and he left and went to Ohio State. And then they took a D tackle as well. Then they also just got Quinshawn Judkins. I don't know, man. It sounds like you're salty to me. That's just that's just me looking at it from the outside, in my opinion. So where Ohio State is really making the changes is in the back end. Their last AD, Gene Smith, in my opinion, was not an SEC type of mind uh, AD. He liked to have a lot of sports programs. He uh, he created quite a bit as well from my understanding and now Ohio State had like they have like 31 or 36 sports programs they're almost tied with Navy and Stanford for that amount of sports programs and that's not good for the football team and that's why I said earlier in the video that they had one foot in one foot out okay because Gene Smith did not like NIL okay he he did almost nothing to promote it almost nothing at all to promote it and then he retires and they end up getting a new president, okay, of the university, and this guy's slick. And he talked about how um, he wanted to get an AD who could handle the NIL, who could handle the over $250 million in revenue that they're bringing in, who could handle possibly negotiation talks for revenue sharing. I mean, he was saying things. It was like, we're, going, we're, we're trying to get to the top. Then he hires Ross Bjork from Texas A&M. Okay, why is that important? Well, for one, there was a flex because... The president called the president of Texas A&M uh, or the board member, someone, I forget who it was. He said it in uh, his speech when they brought on Ross Bjork. And he said he called them and they all gave him flying colors that, hey, we don't plan on him going anywhere. We wanted to keep him for an extended period of time, basically, is, is what it sounded like. Right. And then he calls Greg Sankey. The, the commissioner of the SEC and ask him about Ross Bjork and he, he gave him a flying pass as well saying hey this guy is really good and so what do they do they steal him from Texas A&M because that's how powerful Ohio State is and people don't understand this power the president of Ohio State he understood this power and he knew he could flex his muscles and he did that's what he did so now you have Ross Bjork who's an SEC type mind AD who came into this this program and he's going to help get this program to the top and think more like an SEC team. Instead of thinking like, well, all of our sports need to take off and all of this, he's probably going to cut some of those sports. I could see that happening because he's going to, that's taking more money away from the football team. Okay. And I think that he's really going to help push the football team and the basketball team to, to new heights. Uh, and that's what's going to happen because that's the future. With the TV contracts getting as big as they are, Trust me, it's the future. Whether you like it or not, that's the future. Football is the future. Okay, so Ohio State is making the changes in the back end, and I think it, that should be the most concerning for everyone because the guys in suits who make all the decisions are the guys who are now football hungry for Ohio State when the people before them weren't as much. Okay, and I think that's where you're seeing now Bill O'Brien gets hired. Their, their transfer portal's taken off. Uh, recruiting is, is, is getting even better than it was before. The NIL is getting better. Ohio State is waking up. Michigan helped them wake up. Nick Saban held the door for as long as he can. And now you're going to see a new Ohio State moving forward. That I think is going to be a very aggressive Ohio State. I think it's going to be a very strong Ohio State. And I think they are now striking their bid to become a national championship 
uh, team because they're already a national championship contending team. But now they need to become a national championship team. And so I think that they're doing the right things right at this moment in time to become that.